Hi everybody. Today I'm going to spend some time working on the ZX81s and the TS1000s that I have here. I have four of them that are in various states of disrepair. I'm going to take some time. I'm going to figure out what's wrong with them, make some repairs, clean them up. Then when I get all done, I'm going to add composite output to at least one of them. Stick around. All right, so what we have here is four different systems. One ZX81 and three Timex Sinclair 1000s. As I said, all in various states of repair or disrepair. I'm gonna number them first. We'll number them as I go along. First off, take the ZX81 here. I'm gonna call this ZX81 number one. Let's see what we got wrong with it. This one came to me like this in pieces. It looks like the membrane has been cut back at least once. I don't know if it works anymore. I think the membrane's loose too. Yeah, it is loose. All right, so the membrane comes out of the keyboard. Then we have a, what is this? this, is an issue one motherboard with 2K of RAM on it. Then the bottom of the case. So the case is in good shape, needs any cleaning. The motherboard appears to be in pretty good shape. There doesn't seem to be any damage anywhere. A little dirty, something stuck on a piece of paper or something. Let's give it a shot. Let's plug her into the system, or plug her into the screen, and see what we get. Hook up the RF modulator. Plug in the power supply. And that, I believe, is channel two. Let me just see. Yeah, channel two is towards the inside, so. My, for some reason, my screen picks up channel two better than three. Let's turn it on and see what we got here. Oh, okay, bad connection. All right, so we do have a screen there. We have the K prompt. We don't have a keyboard, obviously. Let's take a moment to just plug this keyboard in and we'll see how it works. See if it's actually still usable. Seems like it's bending as I'm plugging it in. It's just not a good sign. I don't think I'm getting it in there. The membrane doesn't look to be in good shape here. I see little cracks as I'm squishing it in. I don't think I'm going to get that one in. See that? But yeah, there, there, there is some damage to it, so we know the membrane is bad. So let's just, we're going to put it on here, um, screen, okay, um, keyboard, don't know. Other than that, we seem to have it working. Yeah, you can see the damage in here. I can trim that back further, but we're going to run out of room eventually, or run out of places to connect it. So we'll set that one to the side because I do have a Texas Instruments keyboard that I do want to modify for ZX81, so maybe this board will be it. So we know what this one is so far, and let me just write out what it is. Issue number one, and what's the ULA on it because I was told that certain ULAs make really good composites, certain don't. So, what is that number? Hmm, is it 8212? No, I think that is when it was made. That's the date code. 
So it should be a 2C184. 2C184. And just in case, I'll write down 82412. But I'm pretty sure that's the date code when it was made. Yeah, because we got it over here. So that would be 12th week in 1982. This one here is an 82.15, so that would be 12th week, or 15th week of 1982. This one has a date code of 82.18, so that's the 18th week of 1982. So yeah, this one was made in 1982, or assembled at least. So we put you to the side. We do know you work. We just have to do something with the keyboard. So, ZX81 number one. Now, let's do this one, Timex Sinclair 1000. This one seems to be in really good shape. It doesn't have the original rubbers on it, we can see, look at that, that's just pieces of rubber. Let's see what we got here, put on channel two. Make sure we get a good connection here. I notice there's always like, um, I always wanna say tarnish, but it's not tarnish, it's corrosion. I notice there's corrosion on these things. All right, so I'm getting the screen, it's kind of messy, but I do have all the letters there. Any keys working? Oh, a couple of the keys do. All right, so we got, so let's just write this one down here. TS1000, number two, screen. Okay, keyboard. Missing letters. See, I'm not getting a one, or a two, or a three, or a four, or a five, or a six, I got a seven, no eight, I got a nine, and I got a zero. I'm getting some of these letters here, but not all of them. Let's reset this back. This seems to have a hard time connecting on. I know it's the monitor. Yeah, we got a whole, like a whole section of keys, so we're gonna have a bad membrane connection in there too. Um, so we're just gonna say, yeah, it's questionable, question mark. Now let's see what's made of inside. Take off these rubber feet that aren't made for this thing in the first place. It appears that the only one that they left on is the one without a screw. I do believe that's the only rubber foot that has no screw behind it. So let's just see what we got here. Um, Let's see what we got going on in this. One. Come on. Here we go. Take these out. Don't want to come out. I remember when I was younger, I mean really younger, 15, and being curious how these things were put together and taking it apart. I remember that. So there's my screws. Case so far so good. This one was made in 1983. The circuit board is. I don't see any damage on there. I don't see any kind of tarnish or tarnish. I keep saying tarnish. Any kind of corrosion. Tarnish is for silver. Corrosion is for electronics. All right, let's put this over here. Oh yeah, you can see right there, look at that, that membrane's toast. So that's got to be cut back. All right, this is an issue three, ISS three. So let me write that on there, it's membrane. Issue number three. ULA on this one is, again, it's the C2184, or 2C184. It's got a Z80 in it, the other one had an NEC. The date codes on this one is 23rd week of 1982, 13th week of 1982, 24th week of 1982. Now that's interesting, that ROM there is interesting in that it's a Sinclair ROM. If you look at this one over here, the first one, the ZX81, they had Mostec ROMs in them. That has a Sinclair ROM. And then this one, 
I think this one may only have 1k of RAM in it. Because I see in here LK2, LK which controls the 1 or 2k, that one's connected. But this one, L1's connected. So I think this one only has 1k of RAM on this ZX81. More like the ZX81s that came out of England, not the ones that were made here in the United States. The ones in the US had 2k. So then it has a little ROM there, and then it has an unsocketed, which kind of sucks, RAM chip. Oh, right, now she's in good shape again. We got a bad keyboard, so we're gonna have to work on that. So we now have two candidates for that. Now I'm just I'm just gonna leave these apart. I'm not going to put the screws back on right this moment. So that's TS1000 number two, or TS1000 number one, system number two. Now the next system. This one looks very clean. Foil serial number, original, what should we call this? Original rubber feet. So, TS1000 number three. Let's see the rubber feet. Well, first off, let's do the process. Put on channel two. Put that on there, make sure the corrosion isn't blocking it. Ooh, nice messy screen. Keys, one works, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. All the numbers work. Now, Q works, A, Z, W, S, X, E, D, C, R, F, V, T, G, B, Y, H, N. All the keys are gonna work, I can tell you that right now. Because the way the keys are laid out is they are, it's eight rows and five columns. One, two, well, one, two, three, four, five. And then they go back up the other side. So, if you're able to get all these keys working up here, then odds are every one of these keys down here are working too. Yeah, you could have a bad row. So let's just say, then we have eight, then we have the rows going this way. No, I guess I guess you could have one individual key be bad over here. Well, no, you you would have a row out. You would have a half a row. Anywho, we do know that the keys work. That's a good sign. So let's put that on here. Screen, okay. Keyboard, okay. Hey, we're gonna open it up. Let's remove the little rubber feet. Oh, that's the one I didn't have to remove. Say la they're all off. And you know what, while I'm at it, I'm gonna take that one off of there, just for consistency sake. And I don't believe, yeah, the other one doesn't have any on it. So there, for consistency's sake, they all have had their feet removed. They are footless. Stumpy. Yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to be changing batteries on my camera soon. She's starting to run low. So if there's a jump in the filming, you know that was the reason why. Oh, that's a pretty keyboard. Green color. Put all of the screws over here. Let's separate them out, the types. There are two different types of screws that hold the ZX81 Timer Sinclair 1000 together. There's the black ones, and then the little silver ones. The silver ones go through the motherboard. I believe. No, no, I'm sorry. Two silver ones in the front, black ones in the back. Then the silver one's holding the motherboard down too. So that side's nice. Let's see what we got here. This one, it looks like 1983 also, which is fascinating that it's a different color. Maybe it's an issue too, that's nice. We know the keyboard's good, so let's be careful flipping it. What we got here? Well, that's an issue three. 
again the it's got the it's got a different ULA see that it's got a 2C210 and I believe the other is a 218 uh, the, this one was a this one in the first one was a 8 or 28 2C184 and this one is a 2C1 2C210 so this one's a slightly later version and that was the date code of 8310 so the 10th week of 1983 the Z80 chip in here was made in the 8th week of 1983 the ROM chip again another MOSTEC or is that Motorola I think that's MOSTEC 5th week of 83 then the RAM which is 2k is 38th week of 1983 so this one was made towards the end of 1983 hmm, fascinating that one set to the side yep. and then the final one I saved this one for last as you probably can see already it's got screws in the top of it this one I got from somebody here I bought a bunch of it computers from obviously as you can tell he's done a lot of work on it keyboard from the get-go we know that keyboard's bad well the keyboard itself ain't bad we know that it is no longer a standard keyboard so that's a giphy it's an issue 3 2k of RAM 1981 issue 3 okay it has a the ULA is a 2C184 so it's like the first two so I only have one that has a 2C210 24th week of 82 20th week of 82 this has a Sinclair Research ROM from 1981 that's a copyright 1981 but it was made when I don't see a date code on that and I don't see a date code on the RAM it's looks like it's had a capacitor replaced at one point what channel was it on it's on channel 2 let's see what we get out of it I'm gonna try to hold this thing together I can test to see if the keyboard works though really technically I don't care at this point because that keyboard is a mess but still for let's try and see we got a screen that's a good sign the keyboard it appears that the keys are working it's just in bad shape somebody really loved this computer to the point where they did a lot of work to bring it back to life yeah all the keys are working so Frankenpooter is not that bad it's just a mess so this one will take a lot of work to put together but let's just see how he did this he removed the edge connector directly soldered wires in then over here it appears he made an edge connector over here I haven't pulled it apart to look at it but it appears he made an edge connector and I don't know why he put that ground there or did he just oh he used that just to hold the edge connector down it's pressing up against that I wonder how many yeah if you look you look really close in here you can see he trimmed back I was just gonna say I wonder how many times he's trimmed this one back but I bet you he's trimmed this one back a lot to the point where it can't be trimmed which begs me to wonder why why did he keep taking this one apart now I do know he was an engineer he was a professor a computer a computer professor down in Pittsburgh he had a lot of equipment I got from him and this is some of it too most of it was Texas Instruments but is this too but he was a, a computer engineer so he may have used this to do things other than just types and computers programs in but we'll start with this one so we know what number four looks like so there we've gone through and we looked at our four Tonic Sinclairs and ZX81s and now uh, I'm going to say the keyboard is eh works but there we go 
So now I'm going to think about what I want to do with them. So that's the first step in my repair. I want to determine what I want to do. Do I want to let me bring them back over here so you can see? So there we go. So there we go. I brought them all back over here. I'm not gonna figure out what I want to do with them. I believe this one seems to be in good shape. Doesn't seem to be a single thing wrong with this one. And it's got the oddball newer version of the ULA. So I think I may just leave this one stock. Put it back together, leave it stock, put it in the box, forget about it. This one. This one's like begging for the keyboard. It already has so much stuff wired and soldered onto it. So it's begging for a keyboard upgrade. So this, I may just use that one. This one, I think, I believe I'm just gonna need to trim that keyboard. I might, yeah, see. As you can see, look at this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> this one's gonna want me to buy another keyboard. <laughs> and obviously that one too. But yeah. That one's gonna get an upgrade. I'm gonna do a composite mod on this one and a keyboard upgrade on this one. Actually, I might just, uh, we'll see. Let's see what I'm gonna do. I may do it. I'll figure out which one I'm gonna do. I may just order a membrane for this one, do a composite mod on this one, and that one's good. I ordered two keyboards. Um, this one, yeah. Franken Pooter. I am, um, yeah, it's even down to the point where, see. He even removed some of the plastic. Look at this, it's been melted in place just to get it to so you can close it back up. Yeah. Does that one have a transistor stick up? Yeah, it does, okay. I was curious about that for a second. But yeah, he's even removed some of this stuff here to make it so it would fit in there, so. Frankenpooter is getting rebuilt. It may even go into a new case and become a whole new system. So this one I'll make, I'll put stock. These two I can repair back to stock. I just need to get new key bang, or keyboard membranes. But probably since I'm gonna do keyboard membranes, I'll do, um, what do you call them? Composite upgrades to them. This one only has one K memory on it as far as I can tell. So I may end up doing a memory upgrade on that too. Cause I wanted to do a 32K memory upgrade. And this one I'm gonna turn in, this one into my beast. I'm gonna play with this one. This one I'm gonna tear it all apart and rebuild it and stuff like that. All right. So, next episode we get into them. <laughs>